Is this just an overpriced can of water? Does this actually have any skin benefit? We're going to talk all about La Roche-Posay's Thermal Spring Water in today's video. What's in it and can it offer any skin benefit? Before getting into today's video, I want to take a moment to tell you about today's sponsor, Peak Tea. I've been drinking Peak Tea for over five years. They are my go-to for high quality and delicious teas. They have over 20 delicious award-winning flavors to choose from. And what I love most about Peak Tea and what keeps me coming back time and time again is the quality and their unique cold extraction technology. They use this cutting edge cold extraction technology to extract these tea crystals that have concentrated antioxidants and it's amazing because the tea just dissolves in a matter of seconds in either hot or cold water so no prep work is required and you don't have to deal with that messy bag. Now Peak Tea goes above and beyond in terms of the quality of their tea. They triple screen all their teas for any potential contaminants so you know you're getting the best quality in every cup. A few of my favorites from Peak Tea is the Sun Goddess Matcha. They quadruple screen it for purity. It's 100% organic ceremonial grade and what I love the most about their matcha is how smooth and creamy it is. Packed with antioxidants and their matcha is shaded longer for extra L-theanine. L-theanine has a calming effect so when you drink this while you get the caffeine from the matcha tea the L-theanine sort of helps balance that out so you have that energy perk without the jitters. Their fermented pour teas are amazing. They come from trees that are over 250 years old and they're fermented so they are enriched with prebiotics and antioxidants. And the prebiotics are helpful for supporting healthy digestion. Another one of my go-tos is their Hibiscus Beauty Elixir. It's delicious. I love the vibrant color of it. It's packed with vitamin C, which y'all know from my videos is important for building healthy collagen. And their spearmint tea is delicious after a meal as a breath freshener. They're all amazing though. I've never had a bad tea from Peak Tea. They're delicious and easy to take with you on the go. Just throw a couple in your purse. If you've been wanting to try out Peak Tea, now is the time because they're running an amazing offer on their subscriptions. You can get 15% off plus free shipping on your first month's supply of their best sellers. Just use the link in my description box. All right, La Roche-Posay's Thermal Spring Water. Sensitive skin soothes and protects naturally antioxidant. A lot of the marketing and talk around using a thermal spring water will often harken back to the skin microbiome. What is that? Your skin, your largest organ system, contains a wide array of microbes, including bacteria, fungi, viruses, and even arthropods. Yes, that's right, demodex mites. I have a whole video about demodex mites, but they live on everyone's skin. How is it that we become colonized with all of these different microbes? When you are a fetus in the womb, believe it or not, you are more or less sterile. At the time of birth, your skin, your mouth, your nose, and your digestive tract become colonized with an array of microbes. And while it may sound off-putting that we are covered in all of this stuff, it's actually really, really important for the development of a healthy immune system and for our health as a whole. Now your skin, it's the largest organ system. The microbiome of your skin is so diverse. The diversity and relative amounts of microbes on the skin surface varies a lot depending on the body site. As you can imagine, the anatomy of the skin and different body sites is different. And the relative humidity and moistness is going to influence the resident microflora. As you can imagine, under the arms where you have skin on skin contact, you have a different makeup of microorganisms there. Our skin microbiome can change a lot with age. Age. It can be influenced by our gender. It can also be influenced, of course, by our lifestyle factors, our diet, whether you smoke or not, where you live, the climate, and the relative amounts of pollution, UV exposure. Hormones can play a huge role. As you guys know from my videos, hormones play a role in like oil production. That's gonna influence the bacterial constitution on the surface of our skin. So what exactly is thermal spring water? It's water that comes from deep within the ground and is heated from geothermal activity. And as it comes to the surface to enter into the spring, it passes by rocks and sediments and acquires minerals. The composition of the thermal spring water depends on on where it came from. So La Roche-Posay's thermal spring water comes from thermal springs in the town of La Roche-Posay in France. Thermal spring waters contain calcium, bicarbonate, iron, selenium, strontium, silica, 
prebiotics, all of which can have potential benefit for your skin and your skin microbiome. Strontium, which is present in the thermal spring water from a van, is known to have anti-itch properties. As you can imagine, that's going to be beneficial for people who have itchy inflammatory skin conditions like atopic dermatitis. This also has selenium in it. Now, selenium is a component of a variety of enzymes in our skin that are important for managing free radicals, oxidative stress. Selenium is a cofactor for the enzyme glutathione peroxidase. Glutathione peroxidase is super important for removing harmful peroxides. It participates in DNA synthesis and it repairs and prevents oxidative damage in the skin. Selenium may also influence bacterial growth on the skin surface. That's all well and good. Is there any research to show that any of this matters, that any of this does anything for our skin? In vitro studies, which as a reminder, refer to cells in a dish or basically lab-based models, not on actual humans. When scientists took human fibroblasts, which are the cells that are important in like wound healing and make collagen, when those fibroblasts grown in a dish were irradiated with UVB and exposed to hydrogen peroxide, they had better overall survival if they were hanging out in La Roche-Posay thermal spring water. The researchers speculated that perhaps the selenium in the thermal spring water was playing a role in this enhanced survival outcome. Human keratinocytes, which as a reminder are the cells that are make up the majority of your epidermis, when those bad boys were exposed to UVB in a dish, they had better overall survival if they were hanging out in La Roche-Posay thermal spring water. You are not a cell in a dish, so what studies are there on actual human people using La Roche-Posay thermal spring water? A study of 10 humans, both men and women, set out to see if thermal spring water could have any effect on UVB-mediated damage in the skin. The study showed that the La Roche-Posay thermal spring water did not have any appreciable effect on UVB-mediated redness in the skin. But on the microscopic level, their skin did show fewer sunburn cells, which if you're not aware, when you are exposed to UV rays, the cells in your skin, they off themselves and something called uh, apoptosis, programmed cell death. And under the microscope, they have a very characteristic appearance and they're referred to as sunburn cells. It's a marker of UV damage. So there were fewer sunburn cells in the skin that got thermal spring water on actual people as opposed to the skin that did not after exposure to UVB. There are also a handful of in vitro studies done on, again, cells in a dish or skin models showing that the La Roche-Posay thermal spring water shows promise for reducing inflammation. And namely, there was a reduction in certain inflammatory cytokines. Does the La Roche-Posay thermal spring water possess any ability to help improve any type of skin condition? If you weren't aware, mineral water has been used for centuries to treat a variety of inflammatory skin conditions. It's called balneotherapy. Specifically, it shows promise for atopic dermatitis. Perhaps that's related to the fact that it has prebiotics, which may help support your skin's microbiome. In its natural state in the spring, La Roche-Posay thermal spring water has low amounts of bacteria, uh, probiotic bacteria, that in theory could support a healthy skin microbiome. But when the water is processed into something that can be put into a can and later sold on shelves so that you can buy it and spray it on your skin, well, that bacteria is no longer viable, but you have something instead called prebiotic. Prebiotics are non-viable bacterial components that actually help support good bacteria on the surface of your skin. Balneotherapy with La Roche-Posay thermal spring water has, again, demonstrated benefits for atopic dermatitis as well as psoriasis. La Roche-Posay thermal spring water has been shown to stimulate the healthy bacteria on the skin surface of people who have atopic dermatitis and to lower the amounts of the bad bacteria, the staph bacteria that can colonize the skin of people who have, who have atopic dermatitis. And we know that that colonization of, staph, of bad staph bacteria can form biofilms that further drive and aggravate atopic dermatitis. There's also some research on La Roche-Posay thermal spring water for people who have rosacea, demonstrating that the thermal spring water can help with the symptoms of rosacea, which if you're not familiar, rosacea is a skin condition where you have a heightened sensitivity to things that come in contact with the skin. There is an underlying component of immune dysregulation playing a role, and the skin microbiome of people with rosacea is skewed. As a result, they have a problem with their skin barrier. They're more likely to to experience burning, stinging, discomfort when they apply things to their skin, and they develop 
persistent facial redness, as well as inflamed bumps known as papules and pustules. Products that contain thermal spring water have also been demonstrated to be beneficial for dry skin, makes sense. They improve hydration. Although as a reminder, simply putting water on your skin, initially it feels very hydrating, but uh, as the day goes on, it actually can end up drying out your skin because when water evaporates from the skin surface, more water will follow and it can end up drying out your skin. Also, water left on the skin can be irritating, especially in areas where you have skin on skin contact. It doesn't matter what the constitution of the water is, that can still be pretty irritating and further contribute to skin barrier breakdown. So that's all well and good. We have some science behind the La Roche-Posay thermal spring water demonstrating potential benefits, both in cell-based models in vitro, as well as some very limited studies in actual human volunteers. However, the research is pretty small, and you have to take it with a grain of salt, because guess who funded it? La Roche-Posay. This is not a medication, right? It's not an over-the-counter medication. It's not FDA approved for anything. This is a cosmetic. It may have some skin benefit, but it's still a cosmetic. So the research is not going to be robust. Not to say that Everything is complete BS, but definitely take it with a grain of salt. The other thing to take with a grain of salt is that the thing about balneotherapy is that there are a lot of other factors going on with those patients' care. Namely, it's pretty relaxing to hang out in a small town in France. Turns out it's, it's generally a pleasant experience. We already know that psychologic stress plays a huge role in a variety of inflammatory skin conditions, as well as dry skin. Uh, your skin barrier function can be negatively impacted when you are under a lot of stress. Being in a small town in France, enjoying balneotherapy definitely likely has a relaxing component to it that can certainly help in conditions like atopic dermatitis and psoriasis where we know that stress plays a huge role. So that's another potential explanation for the benefit. While the research looks interesting, to what extent this is going to be generalizable to the public is also hard to say. People who have these skin conditions for which the research suggests thermal spring water may benefit, their skin microbiome is already skewed abnormally. So for the otherwise healthy person who doesn't have these issues, is buying thermal spring water going to benefit you? It's really hard to say. As it stands, it doesn't appear to be harmful. As you guys know from my videos, moisturizers, they tend to perform a little bit better if you apply them to the skin while it's a little bit damp. So a lot of people like to use the thermal spring water sprays to lightly mist their face prior to applying a moisturizer. And I think that's a logical and great approach. But do you need to be buying this thermal spring water in a can for your skincare routine? No, this is not an essential. I would say it is a luxury item. If you are on a tight budget and you want to enjoy the benefits of thermal spring water, stick to the skincare products that have thermal spring water. If you are on a strict budget, I would say this, this can of water would be the first thing to ax from your routine and just stick to their products that have the thermal spring water in them uh, to continue to derive those benefits without needing another product in your routine that can be expensive. Let me know in the comments though, do you use thermal spring waters, whether it be from La Roche-Posay, Aven, Uriage, um, Evian, I think has a thermal spring water spray for the face. They're really popular and a lot of people just adore them. I think some of it is related to marketing because they're you know, a French pharmacy type product. I hope this video was informative to you guys. Don't forget to check out Peak Tea. Like I said, I've been drinking their teas for over five years now. I swear by them, delicious, high quality. Love the convenience factor as well. If you guys enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.